Hey, Derek here at Castaway Studios. And today, obviously, you can see two of my heads. I've just got this new toy and I've been playing with it extensively, mapping out shortcuts for a MIDI, a MIDI controller. Okay, I've bought the Akai APC40 Mark II and it was it was on the vMix website. It said it was supported and it also comes with a pre-existing template. Now, I've spent the day mapping out uh, how I want it and I'll show you. But um, what I did was I just realised I hadn't made a shortcut for turning overlays on and off. So I thought, we'll do that. We'll do that live, have some fun, right? So let's have a look. What I'm going to do now is, now yeah, I'm just there. So there's the uh, there's the uh, the machine in question, and I absolutely love it. So if you if you look at this one, this is, it's going to get kind of hectic now, right? So what excites me? I'll get into that first. Is this? So look. Look at the, I'm pointing it, it's not going to help. Down on the bottom, you can see microphone one going up and down, up and down. We're currently in microphone six, so you'll see it just at the very bottom of the screen going up and down. So I've, they were already programmed to do that, and so I've decided to rebuild all of my vMix sets and, and scenes and make them so that I have a protocol so that I can just use this this setup and all all my audio I'll have in in channels 9 through to 16 and that's that. Okay, so there's lots of things that you can do. You'll notice I go quiet because I turn that channel off for a second using this button that I mapped out. All right, so what I want to do, I'm going to show you the shortcuts. It seems kind of hectic, but once you get in the zone, it's kind of fun and almost relaxing um, and a great thing to do the day after you've had a um, a COVID vaccine because it's things are kind of hazy anyway. So it was a great day sitting here mucking around with, um, with this beautiful machine. All right. The sliders, I'm not going to do a review, I'm not into that kind of thing, but the sliders feel weird after using an audio, uh, proper audio sliders on audio mixers. They kind, of, they kind of feel not as sort of super slick, but I guess they don't really have to be and, and no one really cares. But here we go. All right, so the, here's the shortcuts. So this is the MIDI shortcuts. A lot of these came in as a template. So I clicked on template. And there it is there, the audio, the Akai. See that? So you can print that out. I'll, I'll be printing that out and writing what I've done. See, you can see here. Look, I assume you can see. But up the top, these knobs are set to pan. I don't have any interest at all in panning. It's just, let's go stereo, right? I'm, I'm happy with equal panning. So what I've done is I've mapped using the shortcuts i've actually mapped these guys to be gain right so if i'm if i'm not getting enough or i'm getting too much in a microphone or an audio source or a clip i can crank the gain up and at least uh get that get the levels just right um so there's that so just you know th this is how it sort of comes and all these are blank okay so what i've done is I've taken the um, – so these eight, they will put the first eight inputs into preview. So that's – it's already set. Pretty sure. Has he done that? Yeah, yeah. So they, they're, they will put the first eight into preview. I've set them up. Things are going to get hectic now, that's for sure. Um, I'll, I'm going to get out of these settings. But I've set them up to – um, go straight to cut. So there's me, right? And we're about to do the experiment where I take, uh, add some overlay on and off buttons, but we'll have to choose a button together and work out what to do there. Um, and there's uh, uh, camera 
one. Now I overtook this one. This is actually cam- that's actually camera one that I've turned around and reset using uh, using P- using PTZ using the Bird Dog P two hundred camera. So that would be camera two, just as it's as it's pointing at the moment, and that's camera three, which is my um, mirrorless uh, Lumix G ninety five. Uh, running through the Bird Dog Flex backpack NDI converter, right? So that I've got got that just sitting above me here, uh, pointing down at here, right? So that's camera three, uh, four input four. I've set to do a, a desktop capture. Uh, I better press it. Yep, and there you go. And five, six, seven, and eight. It's very exciting, and I'll go over this one day. Um, I've set <coughs> my two PTZ cameras that live on either side of the room. Um, I'm actually going to take my controller and take the camera two and just do that to show you the cameras. Okay, so that's that's camera one across the room, and which is currently pointing at me. And that's camera two over there. So when I press this, that 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 will preset a PTZ, and VMix will control the PTZ using Sony over Visca protocol and go to that set position. So it's very very handy if you're live switching. So I've got two cameras. I've li- I'm live switching uh, four people having a chat with close ups. So number five. See, I can go someone chatting there, someone chatting there. There are other ways I've done it, played around by um, adding little triggers that uh, make it fade out and then fade back in when it's in position, but people don't mind. See, sometimes it just goes slowly, but I've kind of overloaded the whole thing. So six, and that's the camera that I'm on, has just whizzed around to the preset six, which is position uh, microphone, what I call microphone number three, and that's microphone number one. So with a bit of luck, I've pre-programmed the PTZ to come back to, oh, yes, thank God. Right, so that was fun, and that was just a little, a couple of hours to sort of set those things up. Um, the gain, I thought, was a good idea because they're up there generally out of the way. You're not really messing with gain, and you've got your volume control. That goes up, 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 and too loud, and down, down, down till it's off. So it's so ha- it's so nice to be able to manually, physically control the different volumes going into a stream or a recording. In my case, recording. I don't re- tend to stream very much. All right, what else have I done? I've just spent uh, a bit of time. Let me bring back that desktop capture. Um, I've just spent a bit of time and then put that one into preview, um, programming, so so this numbers, one, two, three, each, each sort of track row has got a number button and they're already assigned to turn, so if you look, if you look uh, down the bottom right of your screen, you'll see the green thing flashing on and off, so that turns on and off the audio for that track, okay, uh, and you'll see if you look here, the only one lit is track six, which is the one I'm talking into right now. So I will just go quiet and look. Okay, should be back. Um, the last thing I've just done in my adventures is utilize this button, which is a circle, probably for recording or something. I'm not really into the MIDI sequencing techno world, but I've just programmed each one of those if you look down at the bottom right of the screen under channel one, you'll see the A going green and not. So I can knock, um, I can knock the audio from each of the channel into bus A just by pressing that button, which is very very handy if I'm doing a remote and I've got a director, a producer, or a production company uh, in another place, and I want to send different audio to different people. At different times, so I can be out of the bus, and I can I can set up a bus to send just my voice to the producer, 
and just like a whisper in their ear. Um, things like that. There's lots of fun to be had. Uh, generally, I just I also use vMix for um, mix minus quite often uh, uh, in Zoom and things like that. So I I can actually send I send it off using a virtual cable bus A. I send it off uh, as virtual a virtual cable and then let Zoom listen to the virtual cable. So bus A is getting sent out and uh, Zoom can just pick up bus A. So I can decide what goes into Zoom, which which is, you know, everything except channel, usually everything except channel 7 because channel 7 in my mixing desk is is receiving the USB signal from the computer. So it just cuts that out, creates a mix minus, and it works quite well. So I've got lots more fun and adventures to have. I've got lots more buttons to fill uh, spaces in. Um, I've already got a bit of joy out of the whole preset. Um, I guess the ticking, I've never done it before, where you tick the shortcuts and assign them to the input number. So I was able to, when I decided to take this, um, use the PTZ for my camera instead of my actual camera uh, vision so that when I gave you a tour of the PTZ, I could get it back to that live, uh, I was able just to drag it into that position. And the only thing I have to be very careful of is that the audio always starts at nine. So I've got, you'll, you'll see here, I've got some just blank color thing so if i've got something i don't want in there then i'll just make it a black a black square just so as my audio starts at, at, at channel nine i don't know it's just what i came up with if you've got better ideas let me know i just sort of thought that would be a a good way to start um of course there's this which is awesome uh, because of the way I roll in here, I normally just switch directly and don't use preview. But it's pretty exciting um, having this thing here because you just smash it across and you're done. So I can, I will train myself to start using preview a little bit more. Um, generally, it's not a problem. But now um, the Stream Deck, you know, has the little LCDs in the buttons, and it's I've got it written what it does. So there's less likely for error, but with this one, it's just colours. So once I start programming all of these buttons, we'll see. Well, let's try and get my head out of this. So let's 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 do a little project. All right, shortcuts. Well, let's add one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first thing we'll do is try try and choose what what buttons we want to use to do the overlays. What do you think about these ones? I don't think they're, what you can do is that you can click, instead of add, you can click find, press a button. So this button has two choices. There's down and off. So down and then click OK. And it will show you if it's already been used in the in vMix's template, which it doesn't appear to be. So oh, why don't I use that for now? So I'm going to go add, find, push the button down, and that way whatever I do happens when I press it, not when I release it. Okay, so I'll give it uh, 500, half a second to do what it has to do, and let's work out what we want it to do. What do I want it to do? Overlay input one. Overlay input one. All right, input, it's number 25, which is a little mini, my little mini head, title, mini head. <laughs> this is how I end up in a mess. All right, so I'm hoping, before I make a big mess of this, I'm hoping to get this all sorted in a generic way and then save it as, as, a, as my own uh, scene template. And then when I'm building a show, I open this up and save it as something else and then start adding the weird stuff. So I'll try and put it back to normal uh, before I do that. Okay, so assign shortcut to input number. That's the big one that I'm uh, teaching myself now. 
So that will always that will always put number 25 on. It's not what I want to do right now, but I just wanted to show you that. So if I want if one to eight, if I know that I put one to eight in there, then my head will start remembering that um, number one to eight, those ones I see on the screen. It's got to be easier. It doesn't make sense to do what I've been doing. Anyway, I'm going to take that off now and call myself a liar. Right, so with a bit of luck, now when I press this, my head will go. And there it is. And back on and go. And back on and go. So there's the, oh, there, they have just set a shortcut for the overlay button using this machine. All right, that's grouse. That's really good news. Um, what else? I haven't even looked over this end. There's all sorts of things over there, but I'm sure there are buttons I can use for other kooky things. Uh, but I'm going to have to start writing this stuff down before I forget. I think I think I should put my head back on. There we go. And this button that I just assigned it to, they're kind of sh sunken in too, which is good. So you need actually a deliberate act. It's not like a it's not like, like a general one of the input buttons that's raised. It's sunken under for whatever reason. All right. So um, there's another one up here. This was already set like that in vMix in the template. Record on, record off. Uh, on the Stream Deck, I had a button to start recording, a button to stop recording. This doesn't need it because it it's already programmed to have a little red light when it's recording, which is fantastic. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the play button at some stage. That will possibly um, be used for, for streaming or something like that. The session button at the end there, it's in the dark. I'm sorry about that. That one currently kicks off streaming, which frightens frightens me, as uh, as someone who does recording. So if I, I don't want to start streaming by mistake when there's people in here uh, chit chatting about various things uh, off the record. So I will definitely reprogram that as soon as this video is finished recording, and I'll make that multi quarter. What do we call it? Multi quarter because uh, multi-quarter is awesome. So I'll change that to multi-quarter and leave streaming the hell alone. I'd like to do that manually, to be honest with you. And that's probably it. There are, there are a few other... There's a few other buttons that do various things. Obviously, the master set, so the master volume goes up and down, and I've already told you I've got the, um, got the gain applied to those little knobs. I was quite proud of achieving that. And of course, there's eight more knobs over here for me to do whatever I want with. So I'll work something out. Um, they could be running effects, noise reduction. God knows. There's bound to be a bunch of different things I can use those for. All right, so that's it. That's my, that's, this is day one of using a MIDI controller for vMix. So I use vMix every day. Um, not in a big fancy streaming venue situation. I use it with three cameras and I record people talking, doing their podcasts and things like that. And this, this is fantastic. And one more thing before I go, I have also ordered, I'm going to put my head off like that. I have also ordered an APC mini. And you may say, why? Because I've got the little voiceover studio and I want to do the same thing over there. I need to get set that up. I'll set that studio set up with a, a Zoom Live Track L12. So it's almost a duplicate of this, but with more and more tracks. And th that will be that will be fantastic. In fact, I may even use this one in the other studio and use the mini in here just depending because uh, I love the idea of sending the uh, – and I should be able to do it on that one. I don't think there's all those little buttons and stuff like that. But I look forward to programming it to send the bus channels. That's the key to that room. Uh, it's going to be awesome being able to throw something into a bus, into a bus uh, in and out. And, oh, I can't wait. So that's the new toy. I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Have another look. There it is. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it?
I'll give you a little cheeky. This is a f brutal manual zoom out, just turning the camera, and that's my desk. Okay, so to give you an idea, um, this is my beautiful Bird Dog PTZ controller. I love my L8. Uh, few USB hub, few uh, uninteresting things, and that's that. All righty. I want to go back to me and then say, see you later. Let's try if the record button turns it off. Bye-bye.